Now that you're routinely backing up the data that you want to protect using AvPoint Cloud Backup for Azure, in particular in this case, Azure Active Directory, the next thing that you might need to do at some point, of course, is to execute a restore. And that introduces two questions. What can I restore and where? So let's start off maybe with a user. Let's say that a user got deleted in M365. Well, how can that happen? Well, if I go over into Office and I go into my admin consoles and we go to users, to our active users, let's say someone deleted Alan. Now we can do that here by selecting Alan and going to delete user, but we know we can also do it over in the Azure AD portal. by coming in here and going to users, all users, and here is Alan. So I'm gonna select Alan there, and up at the top, click delete. Delete the user, okay. User has successfully been deleted. It might not look like it, because Alan is still showing up in here, but that's because we're in the all users view. If I now pop over to deleted users, Here's Alan. Now, of course, we could also permanently delete Alan up here at the top. If we don't do that, then of course, Alan will expire in about a month. So it will be permanently deleted anyway. Now, if I go back to my active users view here and I refresh, over here, Alan is gone. And again, if I go back to deleted users, here is Alan. Now with Alan deleted, perhaps on purpose, perhaps by accident, we know of course that we can come in here and we can restore Alan while he remains in that soft delete window. But what happens if Alan is outside of the soft delete window? What happens if Alan has been permanently deleted? So I'm gonna do that here. User successfully permanently deleted. Disappears from deleted users. Gone from all users. Back over here. No longer appears in deleted users and certainly will not appear any longer under active users. And now if we need Alan back, well, that's where Cloud Backup for Azure is gonna help. So we pop in here, we go over to our Restore view, and we click on Azure Active Directory. Now remember, Azure Active Directory backups are taken once a day. And in this environment, I just configured this in a previous video, so we only have today's backup. Real world, you'll have one backup a day going back as far as you've been using the tool. If I click on that, then up at the top, we go to object type down to user. In here, we can see all of our users who have been backed up. Please note that the only reason I'm seeing five here is because when you're on the trial license, it's limited. Typically, you will see every user that you have. So I'm gonna select Alan and up at the top, click restore. Also, please note that you can download Alan's information here and in that zip file, it will come with a PowerShell script that you can use if you need to restore Alan to AD on-prem. But let's say we're gonna to try to put Alan back in M365. So we select him and we click Restore. Here I can view all of Alan's properties, and there's additional properties here that we could see. We click Next, and then we have to make a couple of choices. We can see here, how would you like to handle any conflicts? So if the user does exist, please note the default is skip. Now, why would I restore a user who is already there? Well, maybe you're just trying to reset one of the properties. Maybe something got changed and you don't have the old value, for instance. Well, in that case, you could do merge. That will work with any fields that can just take new information. You could also do overwrite, which would essentially remove the user from AD and then rewrite it completely. 
Skip, in the case of Alan still being in there, would do nothing. It would just skip the job. That should be okay for our purposes here because we know Alan is gone. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. Do I wanna set a password for the user who has been permanently deleted? So that way I can pass this to them. And then we can also force them, of course, to reset that password. I'll do that here. And then down at the bottom, we click next. Now note the description field here would be useful as part of the job history if you wanted to enter that. We'll click next. Here's what's going to happen. And if everything looks good, down at the bottom, we click Restore. Now it tells us a restore job has started. Go to the job monitor. So I'm going to close that. And our job monitor is over here on the left hand side. If you enter the job monitor and do not see the job automatically, refresh a couple of times just to ensure that you give it a moment to kick the job off. And there it is. So we can see this job has started. I'm going to pause our recording and come back once that is completed. All right, so we can see now that the job has finished. And if I expand that, it tells us that we did a single restore and it was successful. So now if I come back over into these screens and refresh, we can see that Alan is now back. And same thing over here. I'll refresh again just to double check. And there we go. Alan is back. So very simple, very, very straightforward type of restore. Now, in addition to users, if I go back to restore into Azure Active Directory and I locate a restore point, we also have the ability to restore things like groups. When you get to groups though, we know that in M365, there are a number of different kinds of groups. So you can see by selecting group, you can then filter down based on exactly what you're looking for. So let's assume I wanted to restore this distro list, select it, click restore. So here are some of the different properties. Here are some additional properties. We click next and we get very similar restore options, merge, overwrite and skip if there happens to be a conflict. The other option in here though that's a little different is you're not restoring a user password or granting a user password if they've been permanently deleted. What you can do though is you can tell it to keep relationships, members, owners, and so on. I would be able to click next and that would let me restore. If I wanted to choose a different type of group, for instance, a security group, Again, we can view the properties, any additional properties. And here, same settings. So your group restoration, similar, but a little bit different to users. Beyond user and group restoration, you also have options for app registration an enterprise application. Now, if you're not too familiar with the difference between the two, we know over here in our Azure portal, if I go to Azure Active Directory, here we can see enterprise applications, and here we can also see app registrations. If I go to app registrations, in this case, you'll see things like Box, LinkedIn, Salesforce, Remember, I'm using a generic tenant here, so these are just available. And if I come back here and I choose app registration, I can see the same. If I go into enterprise applications, 
We've got related and some other apps, including Avpoint apps in here, but I can still see Box, for instance. I can still see Salesforce. So really, what's the difference between these two? Well, primarily, when we're talking about app registrations, Think of those almost like the template that's stored in AD for any version of that app or instance of that app that can run in any of your various tenants. When we're talking about what's listed under enterprise applications, that's a security principle. It's the instance of the app that's actually running in the different tenants. That's why those two screens can appear separately. Well, back here, I can see app registration and I can also go to enterprise applications. So you'll notice that there are some things that look a little bit different. We're seeing some things here that stand out from what we have over under app registration. So under app registration, we see those apps that have been registered with the Microsoft Identity Platform. And under enterprise applications, we see things that are separate from that. What do you need to restore? If I needed, for instance, to restore Salesforce, I can select it. I can view the properties, again, including some additional properties. Click Next. How would you like to restore? And it's just conflict resolution. No passwords like we had with users. No membership like we had. None of those other options, none of those other choices need to be made. If I was to select Enterprise Application and select something and restore one more time, we get to see some properties, some additional properties, and just how do you want to handle conflict resolution. So really, when you're restoring users and groups, you have an extra choice or two. When you're restoring something that's been deleted from Office, and if you're wondering how can you actually remove any of these, well, I can come in here and select the actual app registration and I can delete it. I can do something very similar from enterprise applications. Find it, click on it, delete it. So whether something was removed by accident because it was similar to something else, whether something was removed on purpose, we thought it was outdated, it was unnecessary, and all of a sudden that breaks functionality for your users, well, you can go right into AppPoint Cloud Backup for Azure and you can restore those apps. Thanks for watching this short video on how to do restores in AppPoint Cloud Backup for Azure for Azure Active Directory.